you. Hey, Jody here. This video is on silver brazing. One method of building bicycles is brazed lug fittings on steel bikes, and uh, it's a really cool look, and it's usually done with silver brazing. And I got to visit Mike Zancanato not too long ago, and he showed me kind of some tips on a mock-up type joint using a braze fitting and some bicycle tubing. So we walked through that, but silver brazing is a very universal type, very useful skill to have. It joins all kinds of metals together and sometimes, in the, especially in the case of this bike joint with the, uh, with the lug fitting, if your clearances are right and everything's clean and you do a good job and get braze material to flow 100%, it can be as strong or stronger than a weld joint. So let's get into it. This is a Miko Midget oxyacetylene torch. Very popular torch amongst experimental aircraft builders who build, you know, chromoly uh, airframes for kit planes and things like that, but it's also popular amongst bike builders for silver brazing. Nice small torch, really easy to handle. So the tubes still have to be notched, just like if they, if they were to be welded, but the lug fittings will, will make assembly pretty easy. This is an Anvil Bikes fixture, and you can see that would be nice for a weld job, but we're going to use lug fittings on it instead for silver brazing. After it's uh, notched, it's going to have some burrs on it, so get those off with a belt sander, remove all the internal burrs, and then clean the inside of this lug fitting with a little drum wheel here. Get it all down to shiny bright metal. That's super important for any kind of soldering or brazing operation. And you can see how it just makes it kind of easy to fit a bike together using these fittings. Fairly, fairly close fit too which is also important with silver brazing. Next thing, after all nice and clean like this, is to flux them up, put them together. It's determined by the silver braze filler material, and it's considered a low temp. This is 56% uh, uh, silver alloy, and this is low temp white flux. You can find this stuff at any bike builder supply website. Most welding stores have the you have white welding flux as well, or I should say brazing flux. But you slather it on there pretty good, and I honestly would do the same thing. I am a big believer in overfluxing when it comes to something like this. You don't want to scale up the surface and uh, then have to deal with removing that scale later. It's a lot easier to remove excess flux than it is scaled oxidized film on metal. So this is another fixture to hold it up in place for brazing and not done fluxing yet. I'm going to flux up the outside of that lug too because it, again don't want to scale it up and then have to try to polish that off there. It's a lot easier to soak in hot water and soap or whatever and remove that flux. So get the flame going here. This is going to be a what's known as a carburizing also called a reducing flame. You can see that by the long feather coming out from the inner cone. And it's time to start brazing. Now this this uh, this is steel, so this gets up to a, a dull red, a pinkish area before it will accept the uh, the silver. And the technique here is to that that Mike is using is to keep the torch moving, and to to use to play that torch on the opposite side of the lug where he's feeding the silver metal, the silver braze metal. That way he knows that when it's hot enough to melt the braze metal where he's not concentrating the torch that it will draw it all the way through because silver braze metal and solder will flow to the heat. Got to keep that torch moving though or you'll overheat it. Once you overheat it, it won't accept silver anymore and you got to go back and reclean, possibly even cut it loose or pull it loose and redo the whole thing. You don't want that. So you keeping the torch moving, plenty of flux is, helps also to keep from scaling it up. And you keep an eye on those collars when you see that silver come through to the other side, you don't need much more than that. You can play the torch a little bit just to make sure that it uh, it flows all up through there. But over overheating and just packing silver metal in there just means a lot more cleanup afterwards. You can see Mike wicking some extra flux up to freshen areas up a little bit that look like they might get too hot in scale. Almost done. All right, once it is finished, let it cool completely. Like if this was a chromoly joint, you definitely wouldn't want to quench it in a bucket. Just let it cool off. 
and then with warm water and a wire bristle brush go to town getting all that excess flux off of there that'll be followed by some emery cloth to get any excess silver that's hanging around and that will be followed by a sort of a soft 3M yellow bristle brush it's not too aggressive but it will take off little pieces of oxidation and flux that's left over without taking any actual base metal or lug metal off. At this point Mike would go do some touch-ups with a fine small file just to put a nice little chamfer on the edges of that lug and just get those last aesthetics going so that it's the best looking product for the customer. Uh, probably two most important things are cleanliness. We want to make sure that surfaces of the materials are free of oil, dirt, um, really any kind of hydrocarbon. And then the other thing is clearances. So to get that nice capillary action to draw the uh, filler material through the joint, because that's really what we want to do, we want to make sure that we're only feeding from one direction and we're drawing that filler material across the entirety of the joint until we see it on the other side. Um, that can really only be done if, if you have the correct clearances between mm -hmm. the parts. And that depends on your uh, the actual braze alley that you're using. For instance, if you're using a 56% silver, maybe you're going for a seven to 10 thousandths uh, gap. If you're using low feming bronze, that might be opened up considerably to get a good, mm -hmm. um, to get good capillary action to draw that braze material across. So I think those are the two most important things is your surface prep and then also your tolerances. That and then plenty of flux. Plenty of flux. I like a lot of flux. It's yeah. just cheap insurance. Also I noticed a couple of things I noticed. I noticed things. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed things. I noticed you keeping the torch moving. Yep. You lit it uh, with a you know somewhat carburizing flame, yep. so a little bit of excess of acetylene, you got a nice feather coming out that the cone. Again, keeping the torch moving, feeding the feeding the filler metal on the opposite side of the lug where you were heating so that when it did draw in it would pull it all the way. Yep. That's a good that's a good practice. You know if you think about when you're when you're sweating copper pipes, which I'm not very good at, but I do know that I try to heat it up and heat it up down in the bottom of the joint and then if I got that hot and and, and the top is hot enough to feed in, I know it's gonna pull through pretty well. Yep. You know, you can't see the other side always on, on, a, on a joint like that. Right. Fortunately with the lugs you can see the other side and see when that collar of you can. brace material comes through. Mm -hmm. That's what you're looking for, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you want to see that nice ring of silver or bronze coming through the other mm -hmm. side. Um, I know some guys that actually braze with the lights off, believe it or not, because especially with bronze, you can actually see the shadow of the material when it's cherry red you can actually see the shadow of the filler material working its way through. Really? Yep. Yep. That's, that's pretty cool. I never would have thought about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Like having x-ray vision. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty neat. <laughs> that's cool. So, yeah. um, you know, I remember, I remember but, uh, my one, when I first started doing some silver brazing in a fab shop I was in, it was on a, some kind of heat exchanger, but I also made a belt buckle. Mm -hmm. So it had some, it had some brass plate, like eighth inch thick brass plate, I cut an arrowhead out, nice. I bent up some stainless wire, silver braids it on the backside for a hook. That was my favorite belt button for a while. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it was nice. So anyway, that, the point of that story is, and I think all stories should have a point, <laughs> the point of that story is that um, it, it's very versatile, silver braids. So there's, there's all kinds of different alloys for, for different applications, but there's a lot of overlap too. So if you get a nice versatile Silver braze material, you can stick copper to brass, to, to stainless steel, to steel, to all kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. For instance, we use the 56% silver when we're doing lugs, but then if we're going to join steel to stainless, we'll use 50N, which is 2% mm -hmm. nickel. Um, and that does a nice job wetting out on the surface of the stainless. Um, another thing, just as I'm thinking of it, one important point is... In our mock-up, we didn't have a breather hole, um, but it is important to when you're soaking to get that flux out, I think anyway, from the mm -hmm. inside. Um, so on a real frame, I would have had breather holes in all the tubes, primarily to let gases escape, but also 
yeah. so that we can when I soak it, it, it does a good job getting rid of yeah. most of that flux. Do you have the same issue with uh, silver brazing lugs that you have when you weld without breather holes, and sometimes where it seals up? It oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you'll get a fountain of silver spews. Boy, it's, you don't want that. I know you don't want that. It'll ruin your day. That day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so again, cleanliness again, clearances, good fits. Um, plenty of flux, keep the torch moving, and use a technique where you feed from the opposite side from where you heat so you can draw it, draw that with capillary action, draw it through. Yeah, and I can't stress the cleanliness enough with any material, really. I see posts sometimes about, um, especially new guys who are trying to learn whether it's TIG or um, any other process, and they'll say, here's what I'm doing, and then they get kind of cut down by some of the mm -hmm. more senior people and saying no you're doing too much I you know to me cleanliness is godliness when it comes to this type of work so yeah you might as well give it your best shot yeah well when it comes to the titanium and aluminum and the silver brazing that we've done I'm gonna guess that you've never stopped and said you know what that didn't go very well I must have cleaned it too much right <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> yeah you know whereas, whereas if you don't yes. clean it enough you're like man why didn't I spend the extra <clears throat> minute cleaning that because it would have gone better yeah, yeah that's a great point it, if things go wrong at least there's one less thing that you need to troubleshoot yeah if you know you've done. and thanks to mike for having me and letting me film this video see you next time